Brian Little. <laughs> This is only one video of several that I will be making concerning this trial. Um, I heard about this situation happening a while back and I wanted to wait until the trial was over and the sentencing was over so I could see how it played out and then give my commentary. And I'm so glad that I did because there are so many things to learn from this trial and what has happened. Um, one thing is that, um, we need to understand we will never get justice in the United States of America. Um, if you thought things had changed, if you think because you vote Democrat, Republican, um, or any other way that you are seen as an equal, that you will be given rights, that you will be given anything. Um, in this nation, even justice, when it's plain and clear that you are innocent, um, when you are in your own home, relaxing and resting from a hard day's work, and someone comes in and kills you, um, they will not be held accountable as long as they have the right complexion. And also, another thing is understanding the effect that, um, antebellum chattel slavery and religion has had on us and the power of white Jesus and another thing that we have to realize about black people that I think I hadn't even realized just how defeated a lot of us are just how tight the chains are around our minds we may not have chains on our necks we may not have chains on our wrist and we may not have chains on our ankles but they are tight on our mind which was the goal to begin with but of course you know this is amber geiger and i wanted to play her testimony because i wanted to hear in her own words, what she said about the situation. I don't believe her. The neighbor heard talking and an exchange before the shots were fired. And I believe that if I believe her version of events and that she came in and his door was cracked and she didn't realize it, was, it wasn't her apartment because it was dark, if we couple that with what the neighbor said, then she did not identify herself as a police officer even to begin with. But secondly, there was an exchange of words between the two loud enough that the neighbor could hear. And what I believe is that she when she stepped into the wrong apartment, he was like, hey, what are you doing in my apartment? And he may have been loud. He may have been irate. He may have been pissed off. And he may have said some not so nice words to her. And it could have pissed her off and she shot him. He didn't have a weapon. She said he was walking toward her. It wasn't like he was running to try and get out of the building. He wasn't running to hide. And he wasn't, it's not a normal scenario of someone breaking into someone's house. <laughs> so that's why I don't believe anything she said. And actually the truth uh, was buried with Botham. We all know 
about the hand gesture her brother made. And we also know her racist feelings about black people to begin with, along with her partner. But when you listen to this video, what you hear is that um, she shot him and she painted this movie worthy experience of how she was shocked um, and she had this feeling in her body when she thought someone was in her apartment um, where you were in a car crash and you clenched your body up because she was just so fearful and afraid. And she also described where when she, after she shot him, how she had this euphoric feeling of, oh my God, what have I done? And her head started spinning. It's the typical um, fainting, woe is me, delicate white girl trope that a lot of them do when they have done something wrong. She went into the apartment, then rubbed his sternum, trying to keep him alive or aware or alert or awake. And when you listen to the 911 call and when you listen to her speak about the experience, not once did she talk about how she tried to get help for this man and she was determined to try and save this man's life. He was innocent. He didn't do anything wrong. This was his apartment. She was in the wrong and she did not do everything that she needed to do to try and keep this man alive and get help to him or perform any type of medical procedure that she knew of that could possibly help keep him alive as she would her partner had her partner been shot I'm sure she would have thought of everything under the sun to try and give her partner the chance to survive and she did not do this for an innocent person when she was in the wrong the only thing that she could think about was herself she the only thing that she thought about was she's the one in the wrong she's the one who fired the gun she shot an innocent person what's going to happen to her she's going to lose her job she's going to go to jail you know that's what was rolling through her mind and when you listen to how she says, she seemed very insufficient to be a cop when you hear her speak about herself. And she was talking to the um, 911 operator and talking about how, oh my God, you know, she was in the wrong apartment and it was all about her. It wasn't the state he was in. It wasn't if he's still breathing. It wasn't, you know, where he was shot. It was nothing, no information she could give about her him. It was all about her. And she texted her partner because she needed someone there with her. She needed someone to hold her and hold her hand in this time because she was victimized because she had walked into the wrong apartment and shot an innocent man. That's what I got from her testimony. On that alone, that would have gave her the 28 years guaranteed. And then to hear about the neighbor hearing the exchange and to know that she was sexting her partner even after she killed him would have pushed it on to the 99 years. But um, I think this trial was meant to happen and it, it needs to be taken by us in the black community, black people, as well, we will not get justice. You are not a citizen of this nation. They will continue to kill you and find themselves innocent. They are not governed by the same laws you are governed by. And there will never be a bridge there will never be healing and they like it the way it is and they actually want to go backwards you know with make America great again
and by backwards I mean they want to strip away even the little bit of civil rights that you fought for they want to go back to the good old days And we have to confront something in our community, which is the sickness of religion, not the biblical text. I have nothing against the Bible because something that I realized being in Christianity myself, um, not as deep in it as my fame. I was the one who was the least exposed to it, but just seeing how. Christian people didn't really follow the Bible and they don't um, they don't read the Bible I'll tell you what they do they go to church they let the pastor tell them the interpretation of how they feel is what the words are saying instead of actually reading the words there then the Christian goes home and open the Bible look at the verse and say yes pastor was right um have a good cry and then that's the end of that because honestly if they have followed <laughs> the biblical text um it wouldn't have even been the 99 years but i'll expand on that a little bit later in another video and I have to break this down because I want to stay on topic of all the different things that has happened throughout this trial. But just her testimony, um, just listening to it, just let me know that, you know, this was all about her. She painted herself as the victim. She used her white female tears. And not only did it work on her fellow officers who were Caucasian. It worked on the black officers, the black bailiff, the black judge, and the family who suffered the loss. And we have to come to terms with the fact that we are still within this religion because if you really follow the Bible, you are not supposed to have any images or graven images of anything in the heavens that in includes um, God, the Messiah, or anything. If you were really about that Bible life, that's a command. That's one of the Ten Commandments. And I can stay within the confines of the Ten because there's many more than that. But you have no business even bowing down to wood and stone. And if you read the Bible, it said that, you know, we would be taken into captivity and we would serve their gods of wood and stone. That's the cross. And that is also when you make the journey to Mecca. And I don't care who's mad about what I say. The truth is the truth. And usually it gets a lot of people riled up. It even says in the biblical text that they would lay open the book, make these images and make them in their likeness. And it reminds me of a man who was in Africa and he was telling this African male to look at him. He's God. He's Jesus. He should bow to him. He's the master. How more blatant can they get? What more do they have to do? to you for you to wake up and then what's more disgusting is I have people on my social media feed black people is the ones I'm concerned about saying how amazing this forgiveness was but yet those same people after they say how amazing this forgiveness was they are not going to speak to a family member that they had beef with over five dollars. 
they're mad at a girl who they thought was looking at their man but wasn't and she was all kind of bees and hoes and whores and sluts they're going to get in a beef with another black person in their office. And it's funny how there's so much of a display of forgiveness for your enemy, but you can't even forgive your own if they owed you a few dollars, just a few dollars. They're dead to you for life. Having spoken to family members in 10, 15, 20 years, ended friendships because you suspected something or made something up in your mind that wasn't true. Want to kill a nigga because he stepped on your shoes? But so much praise to white Jesus for the forgiveness shown in this trial but I'll get more into that in other videos let me know what you think about what she said at this trial do you think that this is the truth that she the door was open she went into the apartment didn't know it was her apartment um, do you think they exchange words, which is what I believe, and he may have said something nasty and, you know, she said, who does this nigga think he's talking to and uh, unloaded her weapon? Or do you have another theory? Go ahead and leave it in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one.
You're not a human, Spectre. No, no, you don't. Just respect. No, you don't. You give me your key card. No, to make your key. No. Then you come fight me. N yes, no. I'll fucking knock your fucking life out because Jesus tired of son of a bitches like you. You fucking hate yourself. You hate your conduct. You hate the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming upon you with sword and fire. You fucking repent or you fucking die. This motherfucker better work. This motherfucker better work. Hey, you better get all this, all right? In the name of Jesus Christ, your God has come under, come under on condemnation because they have hated themselves. They have hated their fellow man. They have hated the Lord Jesus Christ. You fucking record that, bitch.